thank you for having me here. So uh, my name is Renee Dvorsny, uh, and you all noticed I'm a girl. Uh, in fact, according to some research, it's probably the first thing you noticed about me. Uh, the second was probably my race. I'm white. Uh, I'm not going to say much about that, but I am going to talk about the fact that I'm a girl. I'm an independent consultant. I do Ruby on Rails development in Seattle. Uh, and I'm going to talk to you about who's wife for you. So uh, this is a common phrase that I've heard bandied about, and I've been asked, have, have you ever been you know, asked this at a conference? And the answer is yes. I have been asked, who are you here with? And this was what was implied. So what am I going to talk to you about today? Uh, I'm going to talk to you about why I'm talking to you um, and uh, what, what our problem is as I see it. I'm going to tell you some stories. I've got a little data, but really, I'm here to tell you some stories. Um, and I'm going to talk to you about what we can do about it um, and, and why you should care. Hopefully, you'll get that. All right, so who am I? Um, here are some titles, a lot of which I've had recently. Um, they are titles that are not usually on a woman. Uh, CTO, engineer, developer, entrepreneur. Um, here are some other titles uh, that I have. Uh, my hobbies, I'm a bit of an adrenaline junkie. Um, I've recently gotten into big mountain climbing, uh, and I'm very interested in the history of it. I think I've grabbed every book out there on Everest, K2, and Annapurna, um, and I'd love to talk to you about that offline. Uh, but, you know, I've also tried to look into the history of women in mountaineering, and I, there's anecdotes here and there. You hear about women out there. Uh, when I'm out in the mountain, I'm frequently the only one I'm frequently like with a small group of people or the only people in, you know, miles and miles. But, um, you know, it's, I have hobbies and I do work in fields where there are not a lot of women. And so what does that result in? Um, all right, so interruption number one implies that there's an interruption number two and there's not. Uh, so I was going to have us all kind of stand up and do something, but I'm not, for saving time, because uh, this is got to do this in 20 minutes, so I'm going to book through. I'm just going to tell you what I was going to have everybody do. So I was going to have everybody get up and have all the people that were wearing glasses come over here, and all the people that are not wearing glasses get over here. And so what I was going to talk about is uh, when I'm not wearing contacts in the privacy of my home, uh, <laughs> I wear glasses. Uh, and I've had glasses for a long time. I'm blind as a bat without them. Uh, and something I've found happens when you're in a room with uh, or a sleepover or whatever with other people with glasses you somehow end up talking about it and switching glasses, um, and <laughs> inevitably somebody goes, oh my god, how do you see with these? Declaring the winner of a game I like to call, how blind are you? <laughs> so this happens, and what I was going to have people do if we were all standing and separated by glasses is I had a plant in the audience uh, who was going to go over, she was wearing glasses, she's going to go over the group without glasses, uh, and I was going to say, hey, you know what, she can no longer play the game. There's nobody in that group that has any glasses on. She can't do this. So she's got to find something else in common with that group. And that's going to be a big theme I'm going to talk to you about, is commonality. Humans, we're social. We're very social. We want to hang out with people like us, with a similar background. When you go into a room of people and you don't know anybody, you tend to gravitate towards those you think you're going to get along with. And you make sometimes really snap judgments about who those people are. Uh, I think we did a little bit of this in the improv on the first day yesterday, um, where you know you judge people, right? You think about who who do I have what the most in common with? So when I go into a a room of developers, I have I have development experience. I have something in common with them. I can make that assumption. Um, but there's usually not another girl in that room, frequently. So keep this in mind: commonality. I will get back to that. So I am going to talk a little bit about some numbers. Um, these are numbers from 2009 about the workforce in America, um, broken down by gender. So there's actually a majority of women in our workforce today. These, these numbers are from 2009, but it's trended. So it's current. Uh, there are currently more women working than men. Okay. So uh, in July of 2010, about a year ago, the Atlantic Monthly published an article that was called The End of Men, and it talked about uh, the changing U.S. economy and how it's uh, heading towards kind of a service-oriented economy um, and this dominance of women being employed over men. Uh, and there were some really interesting points in there, one of which I'll point out, uh, I'd suggest go read the article, it was interesting, um, was that 
parents are seeing for their, their young girls a lot more opportunity for young girls in the, the workforce today, and they kind of extrapolated on that. So I saw this and was like, wow, that's, that's pretty cool, so there should be more women, you know, working with me, right? No. <laughs> this is computer science and information technology fields. I've abbreviated it to CS fields. Uh, it's 25% women. Um, so these are kind of extrapolated down from what they call STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math, which are gearing towards, uh, most of them are actually 50%, uh, better, a little worse, but around that number, and computers, anything having to do with computers, computer engineering, this is the number, 25%. So, okay, not a lot of women. Um, so one of those things, the, uh, the number, titles I had up there with CTO. I do a lot with the startup community. Uh, all of us, we're all developers. We work in a CS-related field. So that first number probably applies to everybody. At the field we are all in, um, most of us, or a good number of us, work with startups, VC-funded startups. The number of VC-funded startups with founding women, 8%. Yeah, the end of men is not here. Okay, so I can talk to you a lot about numbers and regale you with, uh, you know, statistics and whatnot and try and make the point that way. But I've seen a number of people touch on this issue, a lot of, a lot of men at conferences. Uh, one great talk is Erin O'Brien, who she gave a talk at Scottish RubyConf, um, and she's actually talking with me on a diversity panel at Mo Rocky Mountain Ruby uh, in a couple of weeks. And She's not a developer. So I've seen talks and people address this issue who aren't female developers. So that's really why I'm here, is I'm a female developer, I've had these experiences, I'm in your community, and I'm gonna tell you what it's like. So the next couple of slides uh, are anecdotes. They are all true, they have all happened to me, and they've all happened in the Ruby and startup community, except one, I put it in because it's funny, and I'll tell you which one it is. But, so I'm, I'm gonna go through these anecdotes, and I've borrowed from my favorite cartoon as a kid was Animaniacs. Uh, so anybody as a kid, or even as an adult who's watched Animaniacs, great, all right. So there was this segment, my favorite segment, that was called Good Idea, Bad Idea. <laughs> so uh, I've put my anecdotes, which are true, into this format, and here we go. It's time for another Good Idea, Bad Idea. Good idea. All right, so wear professional attire to work. This is the shirt available on Ruby Threads. I have it. I think it's great. We've seen a lot of women swan. Bad idea. All right, so now you think I'm exaggerating. Okay, she's, she's tossed it up for the talk. The Darth Vader shirt. That is the actual T-shirt worn on the first day of work by a colleague of mine, his very first day of work. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna skip a little bit ahead and say why should you care? <laughs> he is known in my head as Penis Shirt Man. <laughs> Do you really wanna be known as Penis Shirt Man? Do you know how many hoops he had to go through with me so that I would give him any kind of respect after this? Really, first day of work and that's the shirt you pick. Okay, uh, also I have two shirts up there. About a year later, he was promoted, and the week of his promotion, he came in with to work with a shirt that had hardcore porn on it. Uh, I did not put hardcore porn on there. I don't want Kobe to have to publish that. However, uh, actual point of view, real life pictures in color on his shirt. So, I'm gonna continue on, not exaggerating. Good idea. All right, I like getting complimented on my code if I do Oh, give me some feedback, that's great. Bad idea. Developer, compliment the developer on her diet. Yes, this happened. Oh, you're looking great. Really? At work? Somebody I don't really know? Guy? Thanks. Good idea. All right, yeah, it's work. I push code all the time. You know, you want to talk to me about that or my ideas on there? I think that's good in a professional environment. So the, the point I'm going to make about all of this is kind of professionalism and having that level of professionalism when we're in the office interacting with each other. At the bar, even at a conference, it's kind of your own, 
your own career on the line there? Professionalism in the office. Bad idea. You ever developed for a third degree about a new boyfriend? Yeah, I got a new boyfriend, and that was like a half an hour conversation. Like, well, I, I put an end to it, but it was like, really? You're going to grill me on this? Like, I barely get feedback about the code I push. You don't know what I do every day. And, and this is what you're going to ask me about? Also, I think there was a, uh, somebody put a, a thing out there saying if anybody can get a naked man into a talk at a Ruby conference, so I think someone owes me a drink. <laughs> idea. Use professional language. Okay, so this one was not actually from the Ruby community in the startup world. This was at a big corporation I was consulting for, um, but it's too funny I needed to put it in. Bad idea. I actually got this line in an email. Who's your SQL daddy? <laughs> really? Good idea. <laughs> Use realistic taste test data. Uh, this is like from Scaffold. I just threw it in there. Standard Bad idea. Piles and works. But I did. I, I can try the example. But this, I actually ran across this in code. I changed it as soon as I saw it. Uh, don't do that. Think about what you're you're writing. So there is a problem. It exists in our community. There are some things we can do to fix it. But it's here. Just because you work for a small company. Uh, or you're in a really great open source community like Ruby community, it does not mean it doesn't happen here. We need to be more aware of it. So, um, book in Why Should You Care? You don't want to be known as Peanut Shirt Man. Uh, I'm going to briefly talk about it. We want our development teams to be, to be smarter, more innovative. Uh, there's some interesting research out there that says more women on the team has a kind of group higher IQ, not full women teams, but having more women on the team, something about social interactions. I'm going to let you go kind of read the article and I'll refer to it because uh, i got to book through. <laughs> um, more diversity on the team. I think innovation really comes from having people with different backgrounds on the team, different ideas, different opinions from yourself, some kind of, you know, differences. You can talk about those. You have more to kind of bring to the table. Um, you know, either specialties in different languages, uh, which I'll also talk about. Uh, OSS community, um, I think these are kind of the gold standards of the OSS community and what we should strive for, being inclusive, collaborative, and innovative. My opinion is that in that order, I think that gives us the best uh, innovations. Uh, we can talk about that more. Um, vulnerable. All right, so we are all developers. Uh, I know personally myself, when I write code, I put a little piece of myself in there. Um, I take pride in my work and open sourcing things, putting your code out there uh, to have other people look at it. I think all of us in, that room, in the room understand that vulnerability. You put it out there, you're, you're making yourself vulnerable. We work in a vulnerable in industry. Um, it is a creative process, and when you open source and put your code out there, you're making yourself vulnerable. Uh, my point here is keep in mind that there's, there's maybe some additional vulnerabilities and additional baggage that some of us bring to the table that aren't always there. Uh, it, uh, that, always, excuse me, that aren't always as obvious as what we all experience in terms of vulnerability. That's my point about open source. What can you do? All right, so I snagged this slide from Paolo, who I saw at Conferencia Rails this year. Uh, he was talking about Java and Ruby um, and kind of different tools for the job. Um, two things he did, uh, well, one thing in general he did through his talk was he talked about an uh, uh, aeronautical engineer and a developer and referred to both as she and her using the female pronouns, um, which stood out to me as a woman. It spoke to me. I talked to him a bit about it afterwards. Um, and it seemed like he was really practicing what he preached. He was aware of an issue, and he, got, he made himself and maybe some people in the audience a little uncomfortable by doing that. Um, but it was an acknowledgement and kind of a reach out, which I appreciated. And think generalist. Uh, you know, if I told you all, seven, go read seven programming languages in seven re weeks, do a little Erlang programming, it'll make you a better programmer, you probably wouldn't argue with me. If I told you go read a feminist blog, which I will later, 
uh, <laughs> or, you know, uh, invite the woman on your team, if there is one, to pair with you, or even a business analyst, if she's the only woman in your office, to come and write a cucumber test with you. It'll make you a better programmer. You might argue with me. Why? It's the same thing. Think outside the box a bit. All right, so one thing, stop apologizing. Um, you know, there's uh, an I'm sorry type. It's all right, move on, learn from it. You know, I, I threw a Miniswan t-shirt. Not everybody knows what that means. Um, but you know what, you go to your, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, Miniswan, Miniswan, okay. So you go, you Google it secretly, you pretend, and then you go Google it secretly and you find out. You know, if I tell you, hey, you know what, you said something sexist or offensive to me, do you go Google it? Do you go ask me later? Do you figure out what the, what the issue was? Think about that next time. All right, so break down barriers. Um, mentor, uh, encourage and teach. Um, do a Rails bridge. If there's a woman on your team, work with her, encourage her. Um, if there's some kind of minority in your workplace that you can reach out to, do it. Just make the effort. Uh, Rails bridge is an excellent program to get more women into computer science. You do not have to be a woman to teach at it. Uh, or to TA, or to have that mentorship, just do it. Uh, you'll learn something. It's a great way of improving your own skills is to reach out um, and, and take that initiative. All right, so my, my two big points were commonality. Uh, think about the things that you have in common with who you work with and maybe some of the things that you don't have in common. Uh, find out more about them, learn, um, and realize that, you know, not everybody is the same as you, and just be aware. Um, and that vulnerability that we all have, I think we work in a vulnerable industry. Uh, I think what we do makes us vulnerable. Uh, and remember that kind of extra baggage that we have when we interact in certain, certain instances, either male, female, or black, white, or poor, rich. Uh, there's a lot of that that we can't acknowledge, we can't talk about, it's kind of, you know, everything's hunky-dory. It's not. Think about it in a second. <laughs> All right, so I wanted to throw these up. That's an excellent suggestion, Mrs. Triggs, uh, but one of the, perhaps one of the men here would like to make it. This still happens. Be aware. It's a funny cartoon. It's unfortunately true. Um, <laughs> you tend to be the stereotype, the, 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 the one in the room representing everyone. Uh, I am kind of putting myself out there and speaking for all women. Uh, which I might get yelled at, I might not, we'll see. But, you know, just remember that this exists and you sometimes make snap judgments about a whole community that you shouldn't. Uh, I get uncomfortable. Let's see, uh, this was my awful bullet point slide that was really just, did I say everything I wanted to say? Um, be less blind. I have that up there, there's, let me skip ahead. My resources, um, the very first one I have up there is actually uh, an article about race. He men mentions gender in there, but it was, um, I thought, a really excellent article that I would say to all of you go read. Um, and it was, don't be colorblind, don't be genderblind. Nobody else in the room is. We all see it. We all notice it. You know I'm a woman. I, I can't hide that from you. Um, acknowledge it, be aware, uh, and stop saying, you know, oh, I treat everybody the same. We are different. Think about that. Um, so Geek Feminism Wiki, there's a resources for allies, I would suggest. Go out, take a look. If anything I've said has resonated with you, go take a look. Just see what people are saying. You don't have to join the conversation. You don't even have to acknowledge. You can clear your browser history and never acknowledge that you went there. But go check it out. See, see what the conversation is about. See if there's something that resonates with you. Um, you'll, you'll learn something, I guarantee. Um, Women write about this all the time. Uh, we share these things on dev chicks uh, with each other. Uh, and sometimes we don't bring them to the broader community. And you, it's like putting the onus on, on men in the room to go look. Well, I'm putting the onus on you. Go look. It's out there. We talk about these things. You, could probably, you may even find something that you've done on there and be like, whoa, that's not what I meant. But you never had that opportunity to have the conversation. So go look. Um, and there's lots of statistics about this. Um, I studied economics in college along with computer science uh, and physics, so I did a lot of, lot of non-women uh, type things. Um, 
and I'm always interested in data and statistics. There's lots out there that hint at the problem. And Tim really wanted to say something, so I'm going to let him. Thank you, Tim. I, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brighter Planet is a cloud-based computation platform. So we provide an API uh, for developers to build complex scientific calculations into their applications pretty easily. One big client we have is uh, MasterCard International, um, and they um, have a partnership with us where um, users of corporate cards uh, who charge things like flights and hotel rooms onto their corporate card, uh, all those uh, pieces of uh, data go into a big database, um, and we go in and, using all those details, calculate the um, environmental impact of all those different activities uh, and put that information back in the database. So the users of these corporate cards can use that information for making energy efficiency adjustments and corporate reporting.